Hey guys, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make three keto recipes in the Instant Pot. So my name is Kristen and I am sister number two from SixSistersStuff.com. Now I share a lot of Instant Pot recipes so I took a little toll on the community tab to see what you guys would want and at least half of you asked for keto recipes. So I thought I would share with you some of my favorites. Now I've actually hadn't done a lot of keto recipes, so my husband and I decided to do keto for a little bit and just so, so I could get a feel of the recipes, what ingredients you should use, which ones you shouldn't. So I feel like I'm a little more prepared to teach you how to make these keto recipes. So. Let's get started. Okay, the first recipe I'm making is cracked chicken. This is probably my go-to recipe. It's so quick and easy. And then we just put it on lettuce wraps when we're done. So let's get started. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just put about three chicken breasts in the bottom of the Instant Pot. And then add about a cup of water just right on top. Now right now we're just cooking the chicken, so we're gonna put the lid on and then We'll add the rest of the stuff after it's done cooking. Once your lid is on, you wanna make sure the little knob is on sealing, not venting. Then we're gonna push the pressure cook or the manual button. And because it's chicken, it's thawed chicken, we're gonna to go to 20 minutes. So we're just gonna go up. There we go, so once you set the timer, you can just walk away. All right, once it's all done cooking, that little L will appear and start counting up. So we're just gonna take the little knob and turn it right over to venting. Once you let all the pressure out, you can open the lid safely and your chicken will be all cooked. Okay, so you have two options. So you can drain your Instant Pot um, and then shred it in here, or I kind of like to shred it on the plate because it's a little bit easier to control. So I'm just gonna grab it. Now there's different ways you can shred. Lots of people like to put it in their KitchenAid mixer and just mix it all up. It shreds so easy. I usually have like bear claws, but I forgot to bring them today. So today we just get handy dandy forks. I'm just gonna shred this all up. Okay, so I shredded all the chicken. I actually took my pot and dumped out the liquid and I'm gonna put my chicken right back into the pot. Now the chicken is still really hot. That's how we want it and we're gonna put in eight ounces of cream cheese. Now you can throw in the whole block like this, but I kinda like to break it up a little so it will melt a little faster. Okay, next we're just gonna add some bacon on top cause I love bacon in my cracked chicken. And then just a little bit of green onions. And then last but not least is ranch seasoning. Now I wasn't sure about this, but as I was looking at the nutrition facts, there are no carbs, no sugar, so definitely ranch seasoning, keto friendly. All right, we'll just dump that into. So now we're just gonna stir it all up until all the cream cheese and everything is well combined. Now, I haven't touched anything on my Instant Pot yet. It still is at the L, so that means it's still gonna be in the keep warm mode. That's the way you want it so your cream cheese will melt a little bit better. All right, so once everything is mixed and well combined, it looks awesome and it, it smells good too. Okay, so to be keto friendly, I'm gonna put it on some little lettuce wraps. Now, if you're not keto, you could easily put this on rolls and it would taste amazing, but because we're going keto, we're gonna put it on their lettuce today. Now you can have multiple wraps, you can have multiple pieces of lettuce underneath, but today we're just gonna do one. Once we fill up our lettuce, then we're gonna add just a little bit of cheese on top. Now you don't have to do that, it's totally optional. But cheese is legal in keto, so this is how we're doing it. All right, all done with this recipe. Let's jump on over to the next one. All right, so the second recipe is Philly cheesesteak stuffed peppers because I mean, you're trying to stay away from the carbs. So I thought Philly cheesesteak in peppers would taste amazing. So let's do this. So I'm gonna first turn my Instant Pot to saute. So push the button there. So we're gonna heat it up a little bit. Then we're gonna put about a teaspoon 
a tablespoon, whatever you'd like of olive oil. We're just gonna saute some vegetables, so we just need a little bit of oil. Okay, so when this is all done heating up, we're just gonna add some mushrooms. So I have just a package of mushrooms. They're called button mushrooms. You can get any kind of mushrooms you want. We're just gonna put it in there. I love mushrooms and Philly cheesesteaks. Now, if you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to add them in, but I love them. Then I just sliced up a whole onion. I like to do them pretty thin because I don't like huge chunks of onion in my Philly cheesesteak. All right, so we're just gonna mix this around a bit, saute until the vegetables are a little bit soft. Okay, so these have been going for a few minutes. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper in here. and then mix it up a little bit. So the, you'll cook the vegetables for about six minutes or so. Okay, so once your vegetables are done, we're just gonna dump them out just right onto a plate right here. Sorry, let me turn it this way. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this back in. It's okay if there's a little bit left because we're just gonna cook up the steak now. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more olive oil to the bottom. Now I did pre-cooked steak. You can also just get some steak that's already pre-cut from the butcher. However you like your Philly cheese steaks, use that kind of meat. So this is pre-cooked, so pretty much I just have to warm it up. But if you get some from the butcher, you want to make sure that it's pretty cooked all the way through. Okay, once your steak's done, we're just gonna add the mushrooms and onions just right back in. and then just mix together for a little bit. Okay, while that's together, we're gonna add a little bit of garlic. Now, it calls for about two cloves of garlic, but I'm just, you know how I estimate. I do that a lot. All right, I'm just gonna mix around. All right, we'll let that heat for just about a minute or so, and then we're gonna get to cooking our peppers. Okay, so once it's all done, we're gonna just put it back on the plate, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, I want you to look inside of my pot. This is one of the most common reasons you get the burn notice. So if you're sauteing something, you wanna make sure you scrub this pot really, really good before we start to pressurize something else. So I'm gonna go wash this and then I'll be right back. All right, so once it's, it's pretty much clean, good enough, we're gonna put it in the bottom. Next, we're gonna add about a cup or so of water. All right, so now I took some peppers. I chopped off the top. I took all the seeds out so we're ready to go with our peppers. Now, these peppers, my grocery store only had really thin peppers. I would highly suggest getting kind of fat ones so they'll be easy to feel and they can stand up on their own. So I kind of, I wanna show you what I did. I used like a little steamer basket and I put foil all around it so they can stand up so all my food won't leak out. Um, you don't have, if you have something other than a steamer basket, you could use like a bowl or anything that will go inside of your Instant Pot that will hold your peppers on. The, the trick is you don't wanna have your peppers touch the bottom of your Instant Pot. So you could even put them on a trivet and put foil all around them. We just don't want the peppers right on the bottom or they're gonna get pretty soggy. Okay, so we're just gonna scoot this right here and I'm just gonna fill up the Philly cheese steaks inside of the peppers. Okay, once the peppers are all full, you'll notice that I still have a little bit of steak and mushroom left. Now this will feed about six people. I only need three today, so I'm gonna take this and stick it in the freezer, so all I'll have to do is cook my peppers later. So that's kind of what's, what's happening here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some provolone cheese, just because I love provolone. You can use other kinds if you'd like. But now usually if it's a big pepper, you can just put this right on top, but because mine are little, I'm just gonna separate it a little bit and kind of just pack it in. We just kind of want our cheese topping. Also, you can also put a cheese layer in your pepper before you throw your peppers on, but I didn't today. 
All right, almost done here. All right, so right now my Instant Pot is still on saute. We don't want saute anymore, so we're gonna push cancel. Cancel. All right, and I'm just going to lower down my peppers into my pot. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on. Make sure that little knob is turned to ceiling, not venting. We're gonna push pressure cook, and then we're going just to five minutes. That's how long it takes for the peppers to cook. So once you set the timer, you can just walk away. Once the timer's all done, you're gonna turn the little knob to venting to let all of the steam out. And then once all of the pressure and steam's out, you can lift your lid up. Now these look amazing. Okay, so we're gonna just pull the steamer basket right out. That's why I love steamer baskets so much. I'll actually link this steamer basket down below for you or one similar that I use. We'll just put it right out here. Okay, so they're gonna be a little bit hot. I'm just gonna pull them out with some tongs just so you guys can see how good they are. Just put them in a bowl so they can stand up so they won't tip on me. Nice. All right, if you guys can see that. This is one of my most favorite things that we've made since being on keto. So, all right, we're all done with this recipe. Now we're gonna jump on over to the next one. So the last recipe today is butter chicken and this one is my favorite. So let's get started. So I'm first gonna push the saute button. We're gonna start heating up the pot. Then I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of olive oil, just drizzle it on the bottom. We gotta start cooking up some vegetables. So we're gonna add in one onion, just minced small. So while the onion's in there, we're just gonna add about, I don't know, a teaspoon or so, maybe two teaspoons of garlic. And then we got four tablespoons of butter that I'm just gonna just throw in there. There we go. And then just, we're gonna mix this all together. So we're just gonna mix this around for about five minutes or so until the onions, you know, get that lovely fragrant smell and are cooked a little bit. Okay, so once your onions are cooked pretty good, we're gonna go ahead and add about two pounds of chicken breast. Now I cut these up into bite-sized pieces. They're gonna cook a lot faster that way. And I really like the chicken when it's cut instead of when it's, you know, you put the whole thing in and then you have to shred it. I, for this recipe, I like them in chunks. All right, so we're gonna mix this around a little bit. Get that chicken all heated up. Okay, so while that's sitting there, we're gonna go ahead and add one can of Hunt's tomato sauce. Okay, so if you look at the nutrition facts, there's only four carbs for about a fourth of a cup and that's all you're eating. So it really doesn't have a ton of carbs in it. So that's why we're keeping it keto friendly. All right, we're just gonna add that whole thing in. Now while this is going, we're just gonna add two tablespoons of tomato paste. And then we're just gonna mix this, mix this up a little bit. So next we have something called red curry paste, and this stuff makes your dish absolutely delicious. So, so we're gonna put two tablespoons of this in there. And I am just eyeballing a little, because this is my teaspoon, but it's kind of a small, small opening there. Nice. Okay, mix that around. So next we're gonna do two teaspoons of Gram, gram, gram marsala, marsal. I don't know. However you think you pronounce this, put down in the comments for me because I'm struggling. All right, this is good stuff though. Whatever, however you pronounce it, or wherever you're from, how you pronounce it, it's good. So we're gonna do two teaspoons of that. Then we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of ginger. Mix that up a little bit. I like this because as you're adding stuff, you're, you're still on saute, so your chicken is starting to cook, which will make the pressure cook time go a lot faster. Okay, mix that in a little bit. So next we're gonna add some smoked paprika. I love smoked, that's probably one of my most favorite spices. We're gonna add about just a half a teaspoon of this, so we're gonna use the other side of this. Now if you haven't seen these, these are these magnetic uh, teaspoons. They are my favorite because they just stick all together and they have double teaspoon on them. So I'll link those down below for you guys. I love them. All right, mixing that up. And then our last thing is we just need to add 
a little bit of salt. So we're just gonna put that in. So it's about a teaspoon or so of salt. I like to eyeball my salt. And if you need more after, you can go ahead and add more after. Okay, so with this recipe, if you are using a Lux that doesn't have a burn notice, you are good to go now. You can put the pressure, um, put the lid on, but because I'm using a Duo, it's going to burn on the bottom. There's just not enough liquid. So I'm gonna add about three-fourths cup of water into it just so we can have enough liquid so it will pressurize. Okay, so I'm gonna push cancel right now. Just we wanna stop that sauteing going on. And we're gonna add about, oh, I did about a cup of water. So we need to have liquid in there. So I kind of just put it, mix things around so it's on the bottom, because we don't want to see the burn notice today. All right, we're just gonna put this to the side. Now we're ready to put the lid on and we'll get cooking. Okay, once your lid is on, we're gonna turn this little knob to sealing, not venting. Then we're gonna put the pressure cook button and go up to seven minutes. Now once you set the timer, you can go ahead and just walk away. All right, so our butter chicken is all done. So it's been releasing on its own for about five minutes. That's exactly where we want it. So now, now we're just gonna turn the little knob to venting. Okay, now that all the pressure's out, we can open the lid. Everything's all cooked. Okay, now it's pretty liquidy because I added that water, but we didn't get the burn notice, which is good. So we're actually gonna turn it to the saute button right now. So you're gonna push cancel and then saute, and we're gonna get rid of some of that water. We're also gonna add about a half a cup of cream just cause we gotta make it creamy. That's the f my favorite part of this dish. Nice and creamy. So we're gonna mix it up really good and then just let it saute just to get a little bit thicker. So just keep mixing, make sure you scrape the bottom as the saute is going so it doesn't burn on the bottom. Um, and it will just take a few minutes to get rid of that extra liquid. So I would usually put this recipe over rice, but because we wanna make it keto friendly, I would put it over cauliflower rice. That stuff is my favorite. You can get some huge large bags of it at Costco or even like the little freezer ones. I don't mind the freezer ones that you stick in your microwave, but I do like it better if it is sauteed on the stovetop or something like that. It makes it taste a little bit better. So cauliflower rice and then your buttered chicken and it's a perfect keto recipe. All right, so once you're done, I just like to put a little bit of cilantro on top, making it taste amazing. And there you go, simple, easy, keto recipes. Now, if you want more easy recipes, make sure to watch that video right there, and I will see you guys next week.